Hello everybody, this is Boaz Fighter. I'm your friendly neighborhood evolutionary astrologer and I'm here with the evolutionary astrology message for the week between September 16th and the 23rd, 2017. A lot of stress and a lot of responsibility are in the skies. The heightening of the sign of Virgo, the archetype that looks upon all the smallest details, that aims for perfection, that wants us to amend and better ourselves, that sees us as a link um, within a chain that is connected all over, that understands that we are here to fix and 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 uh, and heal not only ourselves but the world as well that we're here to give service so there's a lot of virgo energy in the sky and we're coming from a week that we had sun square saturn which is already taking up responsibility being challenged to mature and to take more upon our shoulders and to really work with the challenges that reality throws at us and I know I've been really stressed I've been really clogged up with a lot of work that, and I feel blessed for it really blessed but like I had a, a lecture for the friends of Jeffrey Wolf Green on zoom um, a couple of nights ago and it was in a late hour here in Israel and I I was so tired from a very long day I said I'm going to take a nap before my talk and the alarm clock didn't wake me up and people were waiting for me to give a lecture and I wasn't there. So first of all, if any of you are hearing this right now, I want to really apologize for not showing up. We already rescheduled uh, another talk and you'll be notified about it. So you wouldn't be missing it, but I still want to apologize. And it's about also forgiving yourself, forgiving yourself for letting people wait, forgiving yourself for not showing up, forgiving yourself for being imperfect. And that is the lesson of Virgo which again is heightened in the sky this week. So the, one of the most important life lessons of Virgo is understanding when to let go, going into the other pole, the Piscean, Neptunian pole, and just flowing with it and understanding that we can't have everything always under control. It is not up to us. These are bigger and, and, and deeper things than we are, more powerful forces than we are, forces that we cannot completely foresee or understand. And we need to sometimes let go and just flow with it. So I forgive myself and I hope you, too, you do too. <laughs> Let's begin with this week. Sirius is squaring Uranus on the 17th. We've been feeling that uh, for a long time now but it's at its height on the 17th. And this is about a change, an innovation that needs to happen in the things and in the way that we give out to the world. So are we giving and receiving what we really need, and what the world really needs? Are we giving and receiving too much, or are we doing it in a way that could be bettered, that could be innovated, that could be adapted into something um, more advanced? That's the Uranian energy. And of course, is it, do we feel that we are giving our individual gift? Uranus is always talking about us as an individual and, how, and the way that we are different than other people. Uranus has a feeling, you know, where we feel that we are different. Wherever people have, and you know, I've had uh, so many clients this week with a strong uh, Aquarian or Uranian uh, energy in their chart. 11th house and whenever we have this heightened energy of Uranus it is about us feeling different thinking differently than other people maybe more advanced than other people and that feeling of heterogeneity of being different is like a burden on our shoulders at the beginning of our lives but as we progress we understand that exactly in those places that we are different that's where our genius comes out that's where because we think differently than other people. We are able to take futuristic concepts that are ahead of their time and bring them forth to the present reality and advance people around us as well. And it's about meeting like-minded people. It's all about groups. 
So connecting with people who feel and think the same way we do and progressing issues that we feel together that need progressing. So this is the square between Sirius and Uranus happening in the sky. How are we and what are we giving out and receiving from the world? On the night of the 17th, even though it is a Sunday, do something nice. Go out for uh, a Broadway show or, or, uh, or a good concert or maybe a theater or just invite people over for a nice dinner. It's an important time to enjoy yourself and to be with people that you love and cherish because the moon is conjunct Venus on the North Node, the dragon's head in Leo. It's a great time to enjoy your life with people that you love. On the 18th, it's a very sensitive day. The sun is opposing Chiron, the wounded healer, and the moon is conjunct Mars. So it's a day that we could be very emotional and not necessarily high emotions, more lower base emotions, more testosterone emotions, more uh, cardinal male emotions. So we have to be careful not to be too agitated or aggressive or not to attract aggressive uh, energies. Also our desires and our sensuality and sexuality can be very much heightened. On the other hand, the sun is opposing Chiron. It's us seeing our wounds seeing our pains, not being able to turn away the gaze. And this is part of the theme of this week in the sky, not being able to turn away our gaze anymore. This is a time to understand, are we part of the problem? Or are we part of the solution? How are you as a single person affecting the world? How are you fixing your own life? How are you amending your own life? How are you healing the world? What are your consumer choices? Who are you investing your money in? Who are you buying from? Do you separate your garbage? Um, do you prefer organic or non-organic? Do you eat dairy and meat? All these little choices that we, are suddenly that we suddenly understand have an impact. Have an impact when we are joined with the collective again, that Virgo Pisces axis. And um, so we are not able to turn away our gaze. And on the 19th, just the day before the, f the new moon, Venus enters Virgo. Venus that is in charge on relationships and love, our satisfaction, our self-esteem, is entering Virgo. It's a time to amend. It's a time to heal. It's a time to fix. It's a time to put a more hands-on approach on us, on our lives, on these Venusian subjects of love, relationships, how we satisfy ourselves in our lives, what we eat, what we drink, how we treat our bodies, our self-esteem. Venus doesn't like being in Virgo because she just want to be content. She just want to be in harmony, right? She wants to flow around with it, whether it be uh, the male uh, Venus of Libra or the the um, female Venus of Taurus, they both just want to have fun and peace and love and enjoy our, our, our material existence. And when they come to Virgo, oh gosh, I'm seeing all this imperfection. I'm seeing all these things that need fixing. I will never reach the high standards that I put upon myself. So satisfaction is not something that we that is within reach you know completion is not something that is within reach but still what we can do during the time that Venus is in Virgo is really fix things really work on those subjects and that's not a bad thing that's not a bad thing so on the 20th we have a new moon and as I told you before every new moon is a time that the energy that passes through us, whether from the environment into us or from within us to the environment, is imprinted on the new lunar, the new lunar cycle of 29 and a half days. So if you're really agitated and mad during the 19th, 20th, or 21st, this is imprinted and will follow you through the months. 
and this is tested guys you know it works you know and it works to the like it, if it's it, it, let's say you got really upset in the first few hours of the of the 19th of the 20th and then it became better then the beginning days of your months would be like that okay and then it would get better it's it's amazing how it works actually and I'd love your feedback about that too try it and tell me what you think so the energy is imprinted so really be mindful of whatever is passing through and this new moon is in Virgo, more Virgo energy in the mix. It's on Vista, okay, that is already in Libra, and it opposes Chiron in Pisces. What is that all about? So Vista is the places that we are dedicated to, the places that we feel are most sacred to us. Vista in Libra is all about relationships. Our relationships with ourselves, our relationships with other people, our relationships with the world, our relationships with nature? Are we seeing ourselves as separate, Aries, the other pole, or are we joining together, Libra? Are we at war and at odds, Aries, or are we in harmony and, and, and uh, coexistence or, or, or collaboration, Libra? And it calls us to be dedicated to harmony and peace and love in this world. But it opposes Chiron in Pisces. What is Chiron in Pisces? It's the wound, Chiron, in the world, Pisces. The wound at large. The wound in nature, Pisces. The, 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 the grand wound outside of us in this world, Pisces. And what we are afraid of is that if we really get familiar with this wound, if we familiarize ourselves with it, if we empathize with it, Pisces, if we join with it, Pisces, we could be overwhelmed by this pain. We could be overwhelmed by this wound. There's so much pain and sorrow in this world. There's so much trouble. There's so much. This world is so much is, is so wounded that we are afraid that if we'll look at all this, all this pain, it will flood us and will drown. But this is the sacred task of our day and age. We are here to heal the world. We are here to heal human society. We are here to heal ourselves and walk through the gates of the new age of the age of Aquarius and become our own little creators how exciting is that what a grand task has been put on each and every one of our shoulders how honored are we that something in this universe believes that we are up that we are able sorry but to this sacred mission so yes no turning away anymore do it in your own life do it in your small patch of grass on the 21st the moon is in Libra and it squares Pluto so please no drama <laughs> be less total and less obsessive and this is Georgia jumping from the window behind the camera. You didn't see that. Yes, they didn't see that. <laughs> and, and that's a day to really be more detached and more um, objective and more cerebral about things. On the 22nd, the sun enters Libra. Happy birthday, all you Libras. And again, the emphasis is on relationships and working together and seeing things from the other side from the from the opposite viewpoint not only the opposite viewpoint Libra is all about seeing the whole spectrum it's about understanding the grand uh, technicolor uh, um, suit that we have here as a human race and understanding all the sides and trying to reach the golden road in the middle and it's about peace and love again Libra is peace and love so hopefully some more peace and love in our lives as well and in what we do and how we do things. 
Jupiter is going to Quincunx Chiron on the 23rd. We've been feeling it for a while. This is the height of it. This is about being disappointed, being disappointed from the world, being disappointed from other people, being disappointed while people don't stand up to our high standards. Right, Georgia? Well, don't. Don't be disappointed. Any Chiron, uh, any, any Queen Cox or any Chiron connection is always about purification. So just, you know, not too hastily and not without thought, but clean and clear away things and people and actions and patterns and behavioral uh, uh, patterns you have or emotional patterns you have in your life that needs cleansing out. Make some room for the new. It's about healing as well. If you do that, then what can flow in, in that vacant space, can be something much more positive for you and for all of us here in the world. On the 24th, the 24th Mars in Virgo opposes Neptune in Pisces. It's like we're talking about it again and again and again. Our male energy, our initiative, our entrepreneurship, our creative ability, who we are, our sword and, and, uh, and, and, and shield. In Virgo, hands-on experience, let's fix things, let's do things, not only for ourselves, but let's give service as well. This is not a time to look away. Opposing Neptune in Pisces. Oh, come on. Let's just go back into our imaginary world and float. Let's detach from this reality and go into the spiritual and uh, creative realms. Let's talk to the muses. Let's shy away from, from anything that needs our attention and go inside. And, and let's, let's float with things. These are things that we cannot handle. Let's be passive. This is bigger than us. We cannot fully understand what is happening. Oh, there's all this haze and mist. These two are standing opposed. So it's a time that a few things can happen. First of all, we can have power losses. We can have moments of potency and impotency and, and power crises, losing our power or, or feeling victimized or feeling that we are sacrificing ourselves for something. So don't. Don't sacrifice yourself for something and don't cancel yourselves out. What we should really be doing is harnessing our individual effort, Mars in Virgo, to the betterment of that Neptune in Pisces. And connecting to the simplest. Neptune is about simplicity. Common motives. To... to nature in its crude form to the world at large, to society at large. And these, these two forces are opposed, but hopefully if we are on the enlightened, higher side of things, we can harness our individual actions to a greater common cause. Jupiter is opposing Uranus on the 27th. That's already next week. We're going to talk about it some more. We talked about it last week as well, if you want to see the previous video and you didn't. I want to thank you for listening. I want to say that there's new courses coming up, webinary courses. You can join from your smartphone or from your computer, wherever you are around the world, in English, of evolutionary astrology. We have both a beginner's course and an advanced course and after the beginners course you can open your own charts this is what it's all about me giving you the knowledge of how to do it and it's in convenient times both for Europe and the United States I'd be more than happy to hear from you and of course for private consultations any questions you might have and I just want you to know that you're giving me so much power and I want to thank you for it and your remarks your feedback um, and, and of course your sharing of the videos. Every like, every, uh, every comment, and every share makes this video go out to more people. And if you wouldn't be there, I wouldn't be here. It's about us together heightening the light and working as a group. And I wanna thank you. I wanna thank you for doing this with me. And God bless you. Have a, have a beautiful week and take care. Bye-bye.